Hello and welcome along to another episode of The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's Season 5, Episode 5, and today we play our first game in charge of Charlton Athletic. A massive move that we made in the last episode, of course. We face MK Dons, who, to be honest, are threatened with relegations and should be one of the whipping boys of the league. So if there's any game we're going to win, it will be this one. Though if you look at the table, you can see how tight it is in the Championship. Classic Championship season, actually. Four points separating MK Dons, who are second bottom, and us, who are up in 14th place, and then just another four points off to to 8th place and chasing the playoffs. So a very different season here. It's going to be a classic one in the championship as always. And Wes Brown, the former United legend in charge at MK Dons. And he's doing a pretty good job there to get him to the championship in the first place. But of course, that's all to worry about in the moment. We'll be looking at the new tactic we picked for our side. Trying to introduce the players that we'll be featuring today as well. But firstly, if you did miss the last episode, you do need to go back and catch up with it. It explains all the reasoning for the massive move. We met all of our squad and our backroom staff behind the scenes. So you'll be able to introduce all of the players that we'll be featuring today. All of the stars, some of them on 40, 50 grand a week. Don't forget this side, the media prediction was to finish third this season. So they really are a top side and they've got some good players. And I'm hoping we'll be able to get the best out of them today. We've got four players doubtful according to that team news. It's actually six on the other screen, so I'm not quite sure why it says that. And it's going to be a really tough test for us in the next month or so. As after these first two games, we've got some crackers. We'll be back in the next episode. We're playing away at Old Trafford. Bit of a step up from Scott. Thorp two episodes ago and what a dream this is in our fifth season we're in the championship already we're flying along we're doing really well and I'm hoping we can make the most of this brilliant opportunity of course it's got a bit of a unique football manager feel to it as well we've got a side that are taken over by a tycoon 50 million in the bank loads of money to spend big wages going on players it's a dream situation for most football manager fans and I hope you'll stick along with me for the ride to see if we can make the most of the opportunity if you are enjoying the series and looking forward to our stint at Charlton or even if if you're a Charlton fan and just joining along, please do put a thumbs up on the video. I really do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for daily FM20 content from two long-term stories. This one will be back in two days' time. As I mentioned, we'll go to Old Trafford. We'll also have one of the league games either side of that. Two current Premier League sides in real life, Burnley and Watford either side, and both of them up in the top six in this division at the moment. And we'll also be back tomorrow with Dorking Wanderers, our first game of Season 7 after our transfer special yesterday. So plenty of action going on in both series. But let's go and get into the game today. Our first game as Charlton Athletic Manager. Our first game as a Championship Manager full stop. We've had to make some tactical decisions because of injuries too. And we're a little bit light in a couple of areas of the pitch. But just a month to go till January. Plenty of money in the bank for this side. Let's have a look to see what we're looking like. Finances 48 million. Over 10 million left on the transfer budget. 200 grand a week on the wage budget. We've got our chairman working on getting a director of football in. For anyone who's new to the series, no say in transfers contracts or staffing for us all done in the background by our director of football and our chairman gets in that man to start the ball rolling as Charlton didn't have one when we joined the club so let's go and get in and look at the tactic it's going to be a very interesting spell for us in charge of Charlton the first thing I guess we've got to do is show you the last result. We did win against Nottingham Forest before we joined. So the caretaker Jason Yule doing a brilliant job getting the morale back on side before we came to the club. Some really good performances defensively too. Although there were a few knocks in the side unfortunately. And it looks like they were playing with two up front. But we're not going to be doing that today. Let's go and have a look at the dynamic screen too. We've done our initial meetings at the club. Met the first plot of players. Set the code of conduct. All of those little things. And we've made a very good impression by the looks of it. We've got the manager support just above average now the dressing room atmosphere has gone through the roof it seems like everyone's happy with my disciplinarian style on fines the team cohesion's good as well I don't know how they'll fit into the tactic we're playing today but our hand's been forced due to defensive injuries I can't play the one that suits this team the most the good news is our assistant manager and myself both agree on what that should be but we're not able to play it today for injury reasons so let's go and have a look at the tactic we've chosen why we've chosen it what sort of players we're going for and it's a classic 4-3-3 pretty similar to the one we were playing at Scunthorpe towards the end and to be honest I hope it will suit these lads well particularly while we got two or three centre halves out injured we just can't play with those sort of players and we're also missing a lot of wide men too but I can't find a way to not get them in the squad. So I just noticed one slight error with Dylan Phillips, the keeper, and I've made an amendment to that. But we're going for the custom vertical Tiki Taka. The first time we can really look to play good expansive football in this series. We've got Phillips in goal as a sweeper keeper. Mopping up for that high line we're going to try and play. Normally we've got a very quick back four, but Sane Duffy's in today. He's not the quickest in the world, unfortunately. In towards his mid-30s now, he's not doing too great. Good Irish international legendary player. But unfortunately, physically he's really declining. And that could pose a bit of a problem for us as we go along. 
long, but a player with Premier League and Championship experience, pretty much all of the back four falls into that category actually, so I'm really looking forward to how they get along well, and obviously having Matt Clark back sooner rather than later. We've also promoted Michael O'Neill from the youth team, a really good young Northern Irish striker, already got nine caps actually, two star ability, four star potential, we had a brief look at him in the last episode, he just suits the tactic down to the ground, he's electric, quick, great finisher, decent off the ball and mentally he's okay, we'd like him to be a bit fitter and work a bit harder, but I'm sure that'll come in time, he only actually joined the club in the summer from Crusaders, where he must have been tearing up the league down in Northern Ireland, how he's only scoring one in three I don't know, maybe they were playing him off the right, but up front he should be an absolutely deadly striker, he's not fit today though, so let's not talk about him, we've gone for the classic 4-3-3, we're going for a really attacking fullback, something we've never done at our other clubs, we've always had really defensive solid lines of four, and we're not able to do that here, we want the fullbacks going forward, have our deep line playmaker Selnays, he's going to drop into that holding role for us, maybe just make it a back three when we're on the ball, and try and spray the ball out to the attacking wing backs. We've got two pretty attack-minded central midfielders. Baptiste, of course, an England international remarkably. A championship level, that's a bit of a luxury. So we'll make the most of that having him there. We're going to be positive. We've got two good wingers who can cut in. I say Samuel wouldn't be first choice, but Zeg Rover's still out with an injury at the moment. A day with a twisted knee. He'll probably miss midweek because he doesn't quite look like he's up to the condition. But hopefully next weekend he'll be back ahead of those big games and maybe even feature against United in the Cup. And then Arezo, the big-name striker, is the advance forward. We want to get him goals, goals, goals up there. 53 grand he's worth. He's a Uruguayan international. Could be an absolute superstar in this save. And he's already got a two and a half year contract. So I think he'll be with us for at least the next year or so. However, there is one preferred tactic we're trialling for when everyone's fit, and it mainly hinges on the fact of Clark and Stockford not being fit yet. The two centre-halves out, and that would allow us to switch to this. A 5-3-2, which we could traditionally like to play, is a formation I've always struggled against, so that's the main reason I want to try it. I really want to see how it works on the other side of the fence. We seem to not be able to compete with it as a manager, so why not give it a go, I guess? We've got a good players to suit it, albeit it would waste a lot of the wingers we've got at the club, but most of them aren't very good. That's the very simple answer. I'm sure a few of them will be sold on by the director of football in January, whoever it is that comes into the club. And we've got players that suit this tactic down to the ground. We're just missing good centre-halves at the moment to fill it. And I really feel like it could be the long-term solution for us. But for now, we've got to work with the players we got fit. So the dressing room atmosphere is looking good. The squad's looking good. The tactics are looking settled. So let's go and get into our first game against MK Dons and see if we can put that performance onto the pitch. New manager bounce is what we're looking for. Yes, please, football manager, deliver it. And MK Dons in the relegation zone. If we're ever going to get a good start, it'll be this one. Now, it suggests the fans aren't particularly happy at the moment, despite the tycoon takeover. Just 10,000 into the valley, despite the 27,000 capacity in the London ground. That's really quite a poor turnout for us. They've got two red cards per the referee. He looks like he's a little bit card happy, actually. So there's a few concerns going into the game, but generally things are pretty good. And my only issue at the moment, to be honest, is that we've only got 17 fit players. We've had to put one slightly injured one on the bench. McAllister probably the worst first team player. I think he's the only one we didn't meet in the last episode just because he's only two star ability but at 24 he's got room to improve again and he's versatile and on that three behind the front man. So pretty good players across the board. I'm hoping they'll be able to make an impact today and a bit of experience and youth on the bench. So Dylan Phillips in goal. He's been here for years. He's currently the Charlton keeper in real life. Led them to promotion. 233 league stars. He'll be making that 2-3-4 today. John Joe Kenny and Miranda the fullbacks. Both of them going to be bombing forward all game hopefully. We're looking for the underlaps to start with. I'm not sure if it'll work too well. It's not something I've tried before. I usually play with traditional fullbacks but let's see if it works. We'll give it a go and we'll judge the tactic as we go along. If any of you have experience in it let me know how you think it'll work. Any little solutions and changes we need to make. I've tried to stick to the fairly basic tactic in its purest form just to give us a better chance of it working quickly. It doesn't look like the familiarity is good for the players. You can see up here it's only just over half the bar. Unfortunately the back three is even worse though so I've no idea what they were playing beforehand but either way we just want to get them used to how we play and I'm sure we'll be able to do that pretty quickly. We've got Duffy coming in the centre half alongside Stevens, just because he's about the only one left fit. We have got Knacker on the bench though the backup left back he's a natural centre half too and can slot in as a ball playing defender so it just gives us that option if we need it but I want the experience of Duffy in there for now. Selna's in the holding role I don't know how to pronounce his name apologies if I've got it wrong. Baptiste the England international Alex Mowit the two in the middle. Mowit of course a hero from my 
our previous save in FM19. A good player for us back at Barnsley and another player we remember fondly from the head coach. Delgado over on the right wing as an inside forward. Asayi Samuel covering as an inverted winger on the left. And then a razor on his own up front. Hopefully won't be isolated as we've got two other players on attacking duties and fullbacks that will be delivering for him all day. So we're just going to change the crossing duty to whipped crosses. And I'm also going to get the fullbacks on. They're both good deliverers of the ball. Cross more often, but also try and get it into the centre. Get the man running across the front post to enter it. And hopefully he'll be able to get a few goals in there. But let's just make sure we get the ball in the mixer. We've got Mowit on an attacking duty and a box-to-box -box midfielder. So I'm hoping we'll get two or three just piling into the box. And if we can do the same with a say Samuel, who's on an attacking duty, I think we'll be able to get a few in more often. We're going to ask him to cross more as well. I just want as much service as possible for a Razo and I say Samuel's a pretty poor finisher so we don't need him doing that more often and although Delgado's going to be crossing less we'll again have him aiming for the centre of the pitch but into the first half we go let's go and play our first game as Charlton manager let me know in the comments what you think of the tactic how you think the game's going to go even give me your score predictions and fingers crossed I'll make all the Charlton fans proud and have a good first day as a championship manager well, the moment of truth is upon us. 4-3-3 for both sides. They've matched us up in terms of formation. The likes of Cargill, Regan, Paul, Lee Nichols in goal. Mendes Lang over on the right wing and Gilby in the middle. They've got loads of real players there. Trey Cole's a good youngster over on the left wing. And a couple of regens in there too. But we've no idea how good they'll be. So let's just focus on our game for now. And encourage the lads as we get into our first game as Charlton manager. Well, despite the reduced highlights, we're back almost immediately. Just one minute gone as we've got a throw on the left. Asayi Samuel gets it down as we work down the wing. And hopefully we can create a good early chance. Here's Selnace in the holding role. Out to the right-hand side. Delgado knocks down. Not the best attempt in the world, to be honest. And Baptiste isn't able to get there to prevent the clearance. But look how we're hounding in packs. Forcing them long out eventually, though they do it well to find Coyle. And now they're on the count of themselves with five up. But John Joe Kenny in with a brilliant tackle. Back to Mowit. He's an advanced playmaker. We want him supporting the attacks. Charging through the middle there. Brilliant work. Look at the overlapping Miranda on the left. I say Samuel doesn't need him though. Back to Maui. He finds Selness who switches wide. Here's Miranda the fullback. Gets to the byline. Delivers to the back post. In via Delgado. Looked like an own goal from Cargill. He almost volleyed it in. We're going to have to go and have a look at that. It looked absolutely bizarre. Let's have a look what happened there. We didn't get it from that angle. Let's have a look again. I know we've got a bit more build up. But it seemed a little bit strange the way that one went in. Great ball from the playmaker. Brilliant run from the fullback. The tactic working just as we intended. Cargill's just volleyed it in. He's literally hammered it into his own net. Delgado nowhere near it. But a 1-0 lead after just two minutes in charge. Brilliant start. Delgado on the attack again. MK Don's just hacking it to safety. Stevens bringing it out the ball playing defender. We've got loads of time in the middle of the pitch. He'll sell nice to Maui. Brilliant overlap. Miranda causing all sorts of trouble. Why didn't we have attacking fullback sooner? Delgado heads over. But it's another great chance. We are flying forward using the fullbacks. I'm just going to drop Shane Duffy to a central defender. He's not particularly comfortable on the ball, to be honest. And we'll let Jack Stevens bring it out from the back, as our fullbacks seem to be marauding forward too. 15 minutes gone. What a brilliant start. Although, having said that, we haven't yet had a shot on target. Corner kick for Selna. He's now over half an hour ago. Going to be a bit quiet, but we got a front post header with Delgado. Just over the bar. He got a good connection on it, but unfortunately not able to take his chance. But with five to the break, we're delighted with this first half. And the only question is how it's still only 1-0. Half time then, we lead courtesy their own goal, but MK Dons haven't had a shot on target, only one shot in the game at all to be honest. We're going to ask the lads to guard against complacency, we don't want them to think the job's done, we don't want them to get excited yet. Ten minutes gone in the half, Selnace with the corner, back post, Arezo heads in, the young striker with a brilliant header, he gets his first goal of our reign, delivered by the corner again, Selnace has been brilliant in that playmaker role, set up the wide ball for Miranda for the first goal, delivers the corner pinpoint for the second, and we have been dominant 20 shots five on target two thirds of the possession nearly two and with just over 20 minutes to go we'll make some changes but what a brilliant start this has been to our tenure two subs I'm gonna make one's John Joe Kenny he's not had the best game Adam Smith a like for like replacement just as good the former Bournemouth man and Delgado on the right wing's had a poor game too I'm not sure who to bring on maybe Greenwood the winger what can he do out there he likes to be an inverted winger on attack again so we'll just match him up on that side of Samuel he seems to have been the better of the two wingers so let's try and get him playing to his best 
Well, just 10 to go. We we're about to make our last change, but now we're back with another attack. Adam Smith, the sub, finds a Razo from the throw-in, and we're trying to create another one of those openings. Back post header is cleared away. Mowit on the volley. Hits the post and goes behind for an MK Don's goal kick. It remains 2-0, but it's been a brilliant performance, and I think we've got a bit of a luxury time now. The youngster, Henry, the homegrown player at the club, is an academy prospect, so let's get him on for the last 10. Baptiste, the England man, will come off. He'll come on as a central midfielder on attack, and we'll just try and get an extra man supporting those forward movements and try and nick a third before the final whistle. But that's not happened and we're well into stoppage time now, looking really confident as we move along. But unfortunately now the game's been tarnished. We've picked up an injury in the third minute of stoppage time. Greenwood, the young lone star, who's a substitute, he's come on and picked up a knock. So we've lost yet another winger from our lineup. But a comfortable 2-0 win, a goal for our striker. Brilliant dominant performance on our first game. And we could not be much more happy with that performance. It went exactly how we could have dreamt of it going. So we're really pleased with the result. Even more delighted with the performance if I'm being honest and let's go and see what the media made of the game too just to make sure we're not getting excited too quickly well the first news is bad news I'm afraid Sam Greenwood has picked up what looks like a quite serious injury Cargill's own goal was hilarious Arezo's finish a brilliant header Selney's man of the match so we're going to make sure we give him some praise he's also close to triggering a clause only 130 grand no problem with that so in terms of assists we'll go and praise him superb at creating chances also was key part in the first goal as well getting the ball out wide for Miranda the over Overlapping fullbacks working down to a T. I almost wish I'd done them sooner now. I think Matheson at Scunthorpe really could have benefited from that. Martinez sacked for the second time as Swansea manager. Leaves the club in pretty bad way. And six to seven weeks is Greenwood's injury. It looks like that's probably going to be the last of him. I'd imagine in January we'll get upgrades and he'll become surplus to requirements as it is. So he's not going to see much action after that point. And now it looks like he's injured till the end of the transfer window. So I think unfortunately that's probably the end of his time here. I've just noticed below actually, firstly that our TV game's going to be the Carabao Cup tie, so we'll be playing Manchester United live on the box in the next episode, but also we've received three and a half million pounds for a buyout clause. Who's this Samuel Bunn? Gone to Watford by the looks of it, left back, he's a good player, but it looks like we've got three and a half million extra for him. That's brilliant, he's a good fullback, not sensational though, and that's something we'll certainly take moving forward. No wonder the transfer budget's so high at the club, despite the tycoon being in charge of course, it looks like we've got a really good platform for success. Of course, for those of you that missed it yesterday, the board do want to build the best youth system in the country and we've already got a few good ones in the under 18s and 23s and a few more that are edging closer to first team action. So I don't know about you, but I find a lot of promising signs out of today's episode. Let me know in the comments what you think of the formation, the tactic we've made, the personnel, who could be the stars for us. A bit disappointed in Delgado, but everyone else was a superstar and Selna's working just as I'd hoped. The wonder kid from a few years back and he has not disappointed me at all. But let's have a look at the schedule to see when we'll next be back and as you know it's not going to be long in the making we'll be showing a Manchester United tie it just shows how far our careers come just a year and a half ago we were managing Halifax we just kept them up on the final day in the EFL and now at Manchester United we'll be going two years after leaving Kettering we're going to Manchester United and we're going to be playing a Carabao Cup quarter final at Old Trafford just so we've got a little bit of a gap I'll also show the Watford game as part of that test ourselves against the side right up at the top of the championship and based on that player we just sold it looks like it's going to be a meeting with a former recruit as well so maybe he'll get a game for them we don't know but another player that we'll get a reunion with a really good start to our spell in charge though I'm so excited for our prospects at Charlton and I just can't wait to get a director of football see the January window open and hopefully a bit of chaos to go with it we may lose some players that we'd like to keep but otherwise I think there's going to be largely fireworks at this club if you did enjoy the episode and have convincing first performance though please do put a thumbs up on the video if you're new and you're a Charlton fan subscribe for daily FM 20 content from two long-term stories this one we're really looking forward to our stint here the tycoon owner he's got all the ingredients for a great football manager save and with no sane transfers or contracts as well we can see just how well our director of football spends the money as I said before, let me know in the comments what you think of the tactics and personnel. I'm really interested to get your thoughts on this side. Having such a good array of players early in this save, what do you think I should do with them? I think we're going for the best, but do you agree the back three could work really well? I'd love to try it once we've got everyone fit, but the centre-halves are still a couple of weeks away yet, so we won't be trying it till at least the Christmas fixtures. Finally, for those of you that are new along, I'm part of a podcast that does match day vlogs and interviews too. You can see the podcast match day vlogs link in the eye above. The whole playlist is there with our live game so far. 
far. We love going to football at all different levels and I hope that'll reflect in those videos. And if you haven't seen them yet, please do check them out and give us your feedback. We really appreciate some of the numbers on them so far. It's been absolutely crazy the support they've had and we really can't thank you enough for giving them a try. But a massive thanks for joining me in this one at our fourth new club for our first game. After Ketter in Halifax and Scunthorpe, we're quickly jumping up the ladder to the championship and we've got to make the most of this really undeserved opportunity. So I hope to see you next time for the quarterfinal of the Carabao Cup and a massive game in the championship against a former Premier League team. And hopefully we'll be able to get our feet in under the carpet and really start to make an impression at Charlton Athletic. Thank you.